fish of a lifetime for a lot of people right there. It's a giant, giant, giant. The records are, the records are broken. Are broken. That's the stuff dreams are made. Dreams are made of. This year, they compete for the prize in Florida, the number one prize in the sport of bass fishing, the trophy for winning the Sitco Bassmaster Classic, the prize for proving yourself the world champion. For the first time ever, the Classic starts the season. And on these waters in February, the conditions will be right to catch truly big bass like never before in a Classic. But one good day won't win you the title because the Classic is also about consistency, bringing in every strength you have over the course of three days with distractions, with changing conditions, and with pressure like never before. They are the 51 best in the world. And when it's done, one of them will stand on top of the world of bass fishing. The Sitco Bassmaster Classic. Well, get ready. This hour is going to move very, very fast. We're about to hit you with the number one event in the sport of fishing, the championship of bass fishing, the Sitco Bassmaster Classic. We were promised when this classic began that all the records would fall. One reason, because it's February for the first time ever starting the season with the Sitco Bassmaster Classic. Welcome to our show. I'm Tommy Sanders here along with Mark Zona. They promised us about the records and they didn't disappoint. Man, it was a great show. Records did fall more than anything. We had underdogs, brutal weather, huge bass come on man that's what it's about Were you expecting all these records to go down like they did well the one i was the 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 big bass of the tournament i was expecting that one as far as the total weight I, I was on the fence i was on the fence one of the reasons they were making the prediction of course the time of year we're going in february now but the playing field is so important lake toho and the adjoining lakes on the kissimmee chain the place where all the records were broken and set back in 2001 lake tohofa kalaja or Ooh, lake toho exactly right we're going to start all the way up in the north end of this up on Lake Toho site of where Dean Rojas record breaking catch happened a couple years ago. A lot of guys fishing on Toho. Then on to Lake Cypress, a smaller lake on the chain. Greg Hackney spent the entire event in that lake. On down, we're going to Lake Hatchinahaw. Tommy Sanders, not a real popular no, lake in this tournament at use. all. Yeah. I don't think anybody was there. On down the lake, we're going to go to Lake Kissimmee. This lake right here will prove to be the most productive lake on the chain through the entire event. Lake Kissimmee with the most irregular shoreline of all the lakes. We'll see a lot of it today. There's our rules. There's the way it lays out. Three days of fishing, 51 anglers. Look at the total payout, almost $1.2 million. Last year, you win first place in the Classic, you got $200,000. This year, $500K. Bang! Wow, that's incredible. The weather to start this thing off oh. with was perfect. It was record-setting weather on the first day. And before the tournament started, it was in the 80s, light winds. Everybody in the entire event, I'm going to catch them sight fishing. This Visibly fishing for bass on their spawning beds. Now, our guy Preston Clark, he found him this way. Going down the bank, looking for bright sand spots, which are the fish's nest. You're going to throw a little soft plastic baits into there. This technique right here would prove deadly on day one. But what is the worst thing for sight fishing? Winds and clouds, my man. About halfway through the vent, that was shot. Next biggest technique, fishing matted vegetation. You will see about midway through this event, the guys that were fishing lily pads, cane reeds, hydrilla, they are the guys that excelled in this tournament. They're gonna take soft plastics, pop them right through that heavy vegetation, bang, that's where a lot of the big bass were throughout the entire event. You talk about those winds on the first day, beautiful warm wind blowing up from the south. It swaps totally around by the time the last day of the classic rolls around, a north wind. We're gonna see some guys out there fighting for survival. It's gonna get very dramatic in the final hours of this classic. When we come back, we'll start you out with day number one and show you how the record for big fish in the classic fell, not once, but four times in the first eight hours of fishing. Don't go away. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Woo, that's the right kind. The Sitco Bassmaster Classic is brought to you by Sitco and in part by Mercury Marine and Toyota.
Welcome to the Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail. Welcome to our coverage of the World Championship of Bass Fishing, the Sitco Bassmaster Classic 2006. For the first time ever, being held to start the season, being held in the month of February, and a lot of great expectations for this tournament. Records expected to be broken in part because we're having it on Toho in the Kissimmee Chain of Lakes in Central Florida. Mark Zona, those expectations we know now were met. They Who were, were met. The favorites coming into this you thing know, because of those expectations. Tommy, it was easy to pick them in Pittsburgh, man, when the survivors Classic was just there. Exactly. The survivors. Exactly. Yeah. You knew they they were going to be there in the end. This one was a little tougher, but you got to go with the local guys. Preston Clark, Terry Scroggins, they know the lake. You know they're going to catch him here. Dean Rojas, what did he catch, like 9,000 pounds here a few years ago? Just under 10,000. He's got to be on the list. Rick Lund won the Classic here in 1977. Now, one guy that's stuck in my head, Timmy Horton. It seems every time that guy's on this lake, he catches fish. I guess six or seven days fish order really come out and eat today. But the, but the bite has been later in the day. It's, there's, a, there's a good one. Like Alabama's Tim Horton, his no, seventh okay. trip to the Sitco Bassmaster Classic. The only guy to ever win the Angler of the Year, his rookie year out here fishing. And back in 2001, he had 61 pounds over four days to beat two guys named Nixon and Martin. I'll be honest with you, Tim. Tim was real honest. He said, Zona, I am not on them before this event started. And that's surprising because he usually crushes them when the fish are up shallow and spawning when you're looking at them. Tim Horton just never really got on that bite through the whole event. After day one, 44th place with just under nine pounds. Next guy though, Terry Scroggins. You know what? Terry was gonna, we're gonna see something out of him. The first day we were a little bit disappointed. I think he only had about almost 11 pounds. It was boat number 50 on the first place. Yeah. That whacked the guy in a big way. And I will tell you something, he was full of confidence in before this tournament started. He said, Zona, I'm going 20 or better. Tommy, we did not see that on day one. Absolutely. When your 50th boat to go out, you got sight fish out there that you've got spotted, nailed down, and some other people got to him first. That's the way I understand it. Well, I can tell you one thing. His little shallow water deal, though, after day one, man, it was going to take off in a big way. Terry Scroggins. Start, anyway. Of course, he had a big open championship on Lake Toho as recently as November. Terry Scroggins, the winner in that one. He and Preston Clark down here fishing as a team. 60 events coming down here and winning the majority of them. And, and, and one of the biggest things that Terry has over a lot of the other guys in this field that was going to prove beneficial, he knew the adjustments to make when the weather was getting bad. I mean, the biggest thing, we had like five wind shifts in this tournament where the wind was coming out of different directions. He knew where to go to find clean water. One of the biggest things on Florida lakes is finding that clear water. When that water turns dirty, a lot of the guys' patterns and techniques, they died. Terry was able to adapt to it. As formidable as he is, 10-14 on that first day, how badly did that hurt him mentally? Well, you know, he knew, he knew that was going to hurt him in the long run, but one of the biggest things, he made a huge comeback after that. We got to go to this guy now, Aaron Angler of Martins. the year for 2005, the only guy ever and will ever be to qualify for two classics with one Angler of the Year title. Exactly. The from right. California now lives in Alabama. And one of the things, Aaron had a lot of sight fish found before the event began. He said, Zona, I've got a couple of 10-pounders found that I'm looking at. Do you know where he was the entire for the entire oh first day? I never saw him. <laughs> right in front of our uh, studio, in front of the launch. Oh, the shit. whole day we had an Aaron Martin show going on. Oh, look at the hat, man. That thing's on fire. That's a look right there. The seventh classic for Martin's second three times in the classic, 02, 04, and 05. Definitely did not want another second place here. Maybe better that he didn't finish in the top well, five. The one thing that he ended up doing a lot different than other guys is he decided when his, when his sight fishing thing went down, he picked up a top water bait called a prop lure. It's got two little props, one on the front, one on the back. He just chucked this all day. And look at some of the bites Aaron was able to find on this thing here. Nice and big right there. Incredibly, when you think about it, Aaron Martins has never had a single win with the Bassmasters outside of three open tournament wins in his home state of California. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you, Lord. A great looking bass for Aaron Martins, but how about the look, man? He looks like Johnny Cash. Man, we're looking for people to shake up the fashion world, and this look comes right out of the outback. This is one of our international competitors. If you didn't know, he was from California. Aaron Martins is walking the line, Tommy Sanders. I love it. Aaron Martins, 15 pounds, one ounce on day number one. Respectable, but not up there with the leaders. 
Aaron did not go far from the ramp at all. Like I said, he just kind of drifted right across, got to watch him all day. He was just saving gas. But the man that beat him at the 2005 Bass Master Classic, Kevin Van Dam, a favorite in this event, he was making the long runs, Tommy Sanders. Kevin Van Dam was a favorite for a lot of reasons. Kevin Van Dam was on a major roll. He won the last two Elite 50 events of 2005, goes on, adds the 2005 Sitco Bassmaster Classic. Incredible momentum, trying to be the first ever to win four tournaments at the tour level and above. Kevin Van Dam was full of confidence before this thing began. He was actually talking 25 to 30 pound stringer for his first day. Do you know what he ended up with? 14 pounds, a very very, very disappointing day. Kevin Van Dam always thought of as a power fisherman, a lot of speed, a lot of action in his fishing. Florida fishing known for the guys with well, the slowest technique, man, having yeah. the biggest results. Was he battling that? You know, I, I think he was. I think he had a lot of pressure on him, you know, winning four in a row. And it somehow that may have played into his outcome. The Tiger Woods of our sport definitely fell behind bad after day one, Tommy. 25th place in his quest to win a third Sitco Bassmaster Classic. But when we come back, the man who set all the records back in 2001, Western angler Dean Rojas, had himself a heck of a day with a fantastic finish. We'll see that when we return. Golly, to do that in the Bassmaster's Classic. And the legend of the sport, Rick Plun, would have an incredible day on day one. Oh. He actually held a record for the biggest bass ever caught in classic competition, but he wouldn't hold it long. Who would beat him on this first day of the classic? Come back and we'll tell you. Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail and our coverage of the 2006 Sitco Bassmaster Classic here on Lake Toho, the Kissimmee Chain in Central Florida. A lot of favorites coming into this tournament. Favorites because they're locals, because they know the water, because they're specialists in certain techniques, and favorites from all over the country because they've done well on this lake in the past. And maybe the biggest favorite of all, he should have been, because he set all the records here with Dean Rojas. You gotta have Dean on your list, man. Back in 2001, five bass, 45 pounds, two ounces. That guy's making my list. Tommy Sanders. Now, this tournament could have set up for a sight fishing event, which Dean was doing in that, in that event. Clouds, wind, man, our guys struggled bad on day one. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, three times I've hooked him and lost him. God, dog it. With a few seconds left in the tournament, he had about one cast left. He found one. Uh, got it that time. Got it. Uh, yes, baby. Oh, come on. Open it up. Yes, yes, yes. Woo, I gotta go. Yes. Uh, uh, come on, let's go. We gotta go. We're gonna make it. Yeah. Yes! I needed that fish so bad. Yes. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at the time clock. 24 seconds. Oh, I couldn't make it to the cast. Golly, to do that in the Bass Masters Classic. Oh, can you believe that? 24 seconds. Dean catches 17 pounds, he's in 14th place, and we're calling that a bad day, man. It's Come a fast, on. fast, fast company you have to run with in this tournament right here. So, so far, our favorites coming in haven't put themselves in a position to win the Classic, with the exception of this guy. You gotta count Rick Klun as one of your favorites. He won here back in 77. I don't care if it's 30 plus years ago. He's a favorite. Here's one of the things that surprised me most about Rick. He tells me the day before the tournament, yeah, I'm doing a little sight fishing. Rick Klun, <laughs> Rick Klun doing sight not fishing. known for sight fishing, and he was doing it with a little plastic frog even more impressive to me now Rick said you know what in between catching some sight fish bass I'm gonna fire a spinner bait around here and there you know what maybe I'll pick up a stray three or four pounder well the old classic record for big bass was eight pounds nine ounces caught by Ricky Green back in 1976 Rick's gonna cream that right here That's a bass, it's a huge one. It's a huge one. Oh, that's 
a dar este. Oh my god. I have no idea. Man. I gotta be tired, George. Just get my breath here. Cause he was he was stout. Glad they had that 25 pound test on. Man, if I ever, everybody says, when are you gonna quit fishing? When are you gonna quit fishing? You know, when I quit doing that, that's when I'm gonna quit fishing. Woo! Ain't no drug better than that, buddy. How about serving up a 10 pounder <laughs> on tape, no less, the first day of the classic, Tommy Sanders? I'm shaking right now. 10 pounds, 10 ounces, 59 years old. He's got a lot of this left in him. Don't count that guy. Now, out. you would certainly think that's going to break the record hold for a year or two, right? Even at your better lakes, we don't see a lot of 10 10s. You think that's going to hang in there and do it, but now let's go to another one of our favorites. We had pegged at the top of this program coming into the tournament, one of the hometown favorites from just up the road in Palatka, Florida. Take a look at this from Preston Clark. Preston Clark caught him in one of the coolest ways I have ever seen Tommy Sanders. I pulled up to him, I seen his trolling motor was up, I thought it was broken, it was fine. He was using a push pole that was actually a pole vault that he no, got from no. a local high school coach. That is an actual pole vaulting, fiberglass pole vaulting right. pole from track and field. I said, I said, Preston, why are you using that? He said, Zona, I could push this boat along, look for those sight fish beds, find some of them great big bass, and I could sneak up on them real sneaky like Tommy Sanders. All right, improvisation. That's sometimes what wins Sitgo Bassmaster Classics. On this day, Preston Clark would set the single fish record with 11 pounds, 10 ounces, and guess what? He'd also temporarily set the single day catch in a single day classic record. One of the biggest things, Tommy, is this man was, how would you like to be in a classic just pushing yourself along? Then you find one and you're fishing from your knees. Tommy, that was an unbelievable day. I was out there, as you know, on day one with him. I got to watch this whole thing. There were so many huge bass in this area. He was just kind of picking and choosing what he wanted. It was unbelievable. 11-10 stands. How long is that one going to be in the record books? Till next year when we go back there and he breaks it again on his own. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how that out works out. That old record, eight pounds, nine ounces. Ricky Green back in 1976. Look at everyone oh, who shattered that record monsters. on one day of fishing in the classic Preston Clark, Rick Clun, Mark. Tucker, Edwin Evers, Ricky was number one coming in one day efficient. He's all the way down to fifth. But even more important than that, the single day catch record was shattered as well. Luke Clawson was the man. Single day of a three day classic and two records are broken. Look at that, Luke Clawson, 29 pounds and six ounces and not far behind him is Preston Clark. Coming up, Luke gets a great start on day number two, but he's only got a five ounce lead. You bust almost 30 pounds, you've only got a five ounce lead in the classic. Can he hang on to be the first West Coast guy to ever win a classic? Oh, yeah. That's the way it started right there. I'll take five of those in the video. Sitgo Bassmaster Classic. This is our coverage of the World Championship of Bass Fishing. You win this one, you get the trophy, you get all the bragging rights, you're the World Champion Bass Angler, and you get half a million dollars. A record-setting first day, record set for the largest fish ever caught in classic competition, and the largest single-day stringer of fish. There's the man who made that record right there, Luke Clawson, 29 pounds and six ounces. But what's more important, Mark Zona, he's leading the exactly. tournament. There is still a bass tournament going on yep. here, Tommy Sanders. Yep. And check it out, he's barely hanging on but he was looking to expand on that lead on day two. Probably more excited now than I've been yesterday at weigh in or after I caught the fish. I'm excited to get out there and catch him. I got a good feeling about today. I don't catch as much as I caught yesterday, but I'd like to expand my lead a little bit to have a little fishing for error tomorrow. I only got six ounces on Preston, five ounces on Preston Clark, something like that. The third place is only 23 pounds. You know, I got six pounds on them almost. That's a pretty big lead. If I can get a, a, a good lead on the rest of everybody else and Preston doesn't catch him real good today, I'll be in good shape going in tomorrow. It'll be a real exciting day then. 
Day two of fishing for our leader, Luke Clawson. Let's take him from the launch there in Kissimmee and look at his track where he's going to do his fishing. Yes, sir. He's going down the canal. He's going all the way south to Lake Kissimmee, all the way there to the southeast corner. Tommy, how do you start off a day two in the Bassmaster Classic? Second cast of the day, Luke is going to come out firing. That's a big one. Look at that one. Oh my God, please stay off the giant. Come on, fish. Oh, yeah. That's the way to start it right there. I hope it's five of those things it is. Look at that fish. Another six pounder or so. Five of those would be 500 grand if I can catch that in the next two days. Hey. Look at that, that was like a second cast. That's time, we're gonna have a good day. <laughs> oh, sorry about this. Luke wasn't doing anything real fancy. He was just casting a Texas rig June bug worm. Pretty standard for Florida, Tommy. But it's where he was throwing it, right around lily pads, but he was keying on the root systems. Luke said these bass would spawn on those roots because it was a harder bottom, surrounded by silt. He said when he would get a bite, he would go right back there and catch multiple fish. Roots are big, ugly things, about eight inches in diameter, and they paid on day two for Luke Clawson. Little dude. By the time he gets to the weigh-in, he's got 14 pounds and 15 ounces, nowhere near his total from day number one, but enough to keep him most in this competition. 44 pounds, five ounces over two days. Now let's take a look at the man who kind of bombed on day one, but he came back hard on day two. Are you ready for this? Grab your cameras because Terry Scroggins is mean in business. How do you like me now? Well, Luke Clawson's nightmare just came true. The most feared fisherman on this lake is now starting to charge. He said after day one, we are on a lake, you are never out of it. Yesterday you put 10, 14 on the scales. How about 28 pounds and six ounces? Well, I just ran new water today, and I just, I just kept going and going and going, and I finally found an area that's just loaded with big fish. I know Luke's over here probably listening. He better watch out tomorrow. Uh-oh. Are you mean business? Yes, sir. This is your lake, isn't it? I love it. It's been good to me over the years. I think of Terry Scrogg as being a soft-spoken guy. When yeah. he throws out something yeah, like that, he means business, And right? I will tell you, right before he weighed that sack and we're hanging out, he said, Zona, I'm winning this thing tomorrow. That is exactly how he phrased it. Luke Lawson was standing right there when he said it. All right, so the stage is set for a big day on day three of the Classic. We figure seven anglers have a legitimate shot at taking the crown of world champion bass angler, including Preston Clark, the other hometown I'll favorite in this thing. Yeah, Edwin Evers, Terry Scroggins in there, Ron Shuffield, we'll see him in action on day three. Luke Lawson is still on top, trying to wire to wire this thing. Worth Rick Morris, we'll see him fishing in a very different sort of place. That's all coming up when we get back with the final day of The Big Deal. About a week before the fishing started up at the Harris Chain in Leesburg, Florida, another important event, the Junior Bassmaster World Championship. Two age groups there. The winner of the senior group, Nick Kelly of Tennessee. The winner of the junior group won Peyton Hibden of Missouri. Peyton Hibden, the son of Dion Hibden, former classic champ, and grandson of another former classic champ, Guido Hibden. Well, today on our show, we've come to the final day of fishing. On this final day, we cover the Super Six, the top six finishers after two days. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present your 2006 Sitco Bassmaster Classics Super Six. With 35 pounds, 9 ounces, from Prestwood, Kentucky, Kevin. First, we will look at the competitor from Kentucky, the former jockey in the Kentucky Derby, Kevin Worth. Kevin Worth fishing in his seventh Bassmaster Classic. The best he's ever done is eighth place in the Classic. 
He qualified from the Tour 14th place there. On day one, 22 pounds and five ounces. A huge bag on day one. Day two, off the pace a good bit with 13 pounds so. and four ounces. You know, I'm not too concerned because, you know, what, all I'm trying to do is win, win this thing. And I know if, if I go back where I've already had bites, kind of the area I was in yesterday and the day before, can't, I can't win from there. I've got to look for some fresh water and something that's not being pounded by the wind or other fishermen and, and not even think twice. If I don't catch a fish all day, I will not even think twice about my decision. Well, he was dead sticking a Strike King Zero. Tommy? What is that in English? How is he catching them? <laughs> He's taking a soft plastic stick bait, throwing it out, and just dead sticking. Just like it sounds, fishing it extremely slow, you have to have unbelievable patience to fish this way. He scores again, sports fans. He's a rockin' and a rollin', baby. Dean Rojas was the man with the last second heroics from day number one. Yeah. On day number three, will Kevin Worth would have his chance. Oh, now come on, Tommy Wait, Sanders. He's, he's pinned to the reeds. He's pinned to the reeds. Uh -oh. Let me tell you something. You know what happens when that happens to Mark Zona? Right there, <laughs> I fall in the drink. I hit my head on the trolling motor. I'm unconscious. you got to be kidding me. That is absolutely, oh, he's still on there. Sure, why not? It looks, looks like he's coming up for air right there, Tommy Sanders. You know you're going to be in the top 10 in the Classic when that happens. Got you, you little sucker. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> what about that one? Never in my life. Lots of laughs on the final day of the wow. Classic, but not a good day for poundage for Kevin Worth. Coming in with only six pounds, seven ounces, he finishes in eighth place. That was amazing. With 37 pounds, five ounces from Virginia Beach, Virginia, Rick Morris. Our first look in this Classic at Rick Morris from Lenexa, Virginia. They're in the Tidewater area. Our first look at Rick in the Classic for a long time. He hasn't been here. In nine years, he starts the day in fifth place, but seven pounds back of the leader, Luke Clawson. Tommy, I give Rick uh, enormous props on this. He was a huge underdog in this tournament. Nobody expected him to do real well, and he didn't hardly fish around anybody. And not only that, he fished a certain way that is real new to the fishing world. About to take a look at how he really didn't get near anyone else, and here's how he did it. Started at the launch, of course, with everyone else, but he goes all the way down through Cypress Lake, through Hatchinaha, and all the way through Lake Cassini into the canal, the exit canal from Kissimmee. That's huge right there. Nobody was down in the Kissimmee River. And the biggest thing is he had this water all to himself. It seemed like everybody else was kind of dividing water. And in a classic when everyone's been kind of ham and egg and it, this guy is the measure of consistency. Rick Morris, take a look at that. Day one, 18-7. Day two, he comes back with 18 pounds, four ounces again. He's a picture of consistency. Everybody else kind of had a big day, then a smaller day. This guy's pounding out limits and consistency wins. Not only that, he's fishing a place all to himself in the Kissimmee River. Got key little stretches in here now that I've been here for three days. This is the third day, one day of practice, it's really the fourth day. I've learned which stretches tend to hold the fish. The wind switches back and forth and you gotta follow the wind because the wind is what pushes them up out of deep water to feed. So, uh, so far we haven't had a bite, we just got started. We got five hours, that's one big bite an hour. And we're gonna have plenty of wind today. They're calling for what, 20 to 30. But it's still a west wind now, they should bite. Okay, Rick Morris has hit his spot off the canal there, and he's ready to get after it with this thing, a chatterbait. Exactly right. Most of us have never seen one, let alone fish with it. Besides having great hair, he's got a great lure right now, Tommy Sanders. <laughs> Agreed. And, and the best way to describe it, it's kind of like 
a spinner bait and a crank bait combined, all wrapped up in one. Now, you don't fish it though like a jig. You you throw it out and you're just kind of cranking it in, okay? Now that thing in the front is just a piece of stamped That's metal that they can manipulate, right, to make the thing move differently. And I can tell you something, for the last four or five weeks in Florida, this bait has probably won about a half a million dollars. Rick picked up on this, probably one of the only guys throwing it in this event. But the biggest thing is, these bass have probably never seen this bait on this lake before. Total, totally new to them, and that's one of the keys to getting a lot of bites with something new. A lot of movement on that thing. If you're watching one's rod tip when they're fishing one of those things, it thinks like it's an earthquake going along. Magical. There. Really got to look at it and get a feel for how that thing moves around. That was easy. Well, you know what? That was kind of easy. It Rick was. Morris, 51 pounds, only 13.11 on day number three, so not as consistent as the first two days, but he has himself a great classic. When we come back, the man who fired a big shot with a 29-pound-plus stringer on day one, Preston Clark, another one of our Super Six. From Palatka, Florida, Preston Clark. Our coverage of the Sitgo Bassmaster Classic continues. It's the final day, and we're watching the Super Six, the top six qualifiers after two days of fishing in this classic. One of those trying to be the first angler ever to win a classic in his home state, Palatka, Florida's Preston Clark. Set the big fish record on the first day, but he would struggle on this final day. something there. Preston Clark was the only angler on day one and day two to stay in Toho. We could almost see him from the ramp. His running buddy, local gun, Terry Scroggins, the entire event, he was going to be down in Lake Kissimmee. Now, this is where things drastically change. After day one and day two, Preston Clark, the wheels came off of his sight fishing pattern. Basically had nothing left in Lake Toho. Terry Scroggins going right back down to Kissimmee. Well, look at Preston Clark. He's going to come down to the party, too. Now, check it out, though, Tommy. He not went the down same place. To, not the same place. And these guys used to fish team tournaments together. They both know the same water. All right, and now to the other guy trying to be a local guy to win the Classic for the first time ever, Terry Scroggins. Terry Scroggins has been on unsteady footing throughout this <laughs> Classic. Day one, basically a washout for him, according to his expectations, only 10 pounds or so. But day two, he really, really gets it together. Uh, Tommy, he was going to burn some gas this day. If he's ever caught a bass down in Kissimmee, he was going to check those spots on day two. He's making his rounds, hasn't quite found the mother load yet. He's going to go all the way to the south end of the lake, catch a little dink right here. Now, when he starts heading back up north, Bang, the mother load, three pounder, 10 pounder, five pounder, seven pounder. This is the area where he did all of his damage on day two. Here's the results, Tommy. Terry Scroggins may have a future in NASCAR. Oh. He can go around turning left with the best of him. And what a day he has, 28 pounds and six ounces. On so the fire. man from Palatka, Florida is back in it. And the rest of the competitors can see a picture of him very well in their rear view mirror. Uh, I spent on a Senko, this, this whole big bay right here is just a big spotting flat. Uh, yesterday, as you can see, it's like a five acre, about a five acre deal. Yesterday I caught these fish in about a half acre. I didn't fish this whole thing. I tried to save some up for today, and uh, I hope it pays off. I had this whole area to myself yesterday. Today we got one local guy in here, which that's pretty cool. They've got a, a, a big uh, local boat tournament going on today, and I'm really glad to see there's only one other boat in here. That's a, that's a pretty good deal. I was expecting a lot more. Terry Scroggins, with all his experience on Toho, ought to know what to do when the weather gets bad. Well, he does. I mean, he knows the protected areas, and more than anything, he knows where the water is going to stay clean. Water that's not going to get damaged by the heavy winds. Florida bass has been pointed out many times like it as clean and clear as you can possibly find it. All the fish I caught yesterday, I caught right in this area right here, and the water's kind of getting a little bit muddy out here. Uh, everything I caught today has been inside, so we're going to go back inside. See if I can't catch a couple good fish in there. 
Is this a guy who's running out yeah. of ideas? Well, here's the problem right here. He is fishing a weightless plastic worm. The worst thing in the world for that, heavy, heavy winds. Tommy, the last day, it blew 30 to 40. Can you even feel your line on a day no. like that? You couldn't no. feel a bite, could you? I can tell you that the fish will have the worm way down by the time you set the hook on him. And I run a lot smaller today, but it's a tough day, so I ain't gonna tell them what's gonna happen. If I can somehow catch about 20 pounds, I have a good shot today. Get three more of them like that. I'm gonna go flip and try to catch a big one. Scroggins' prediction would not come true on the final day. Ended up fourth, 46-15. Only two anglers left in the Super 6 that we've not watched yet. Ron Sheffield and Luke Clawson. One of these two anglers is going to go home with a half a million dollars in his pocket and be the 2006 Sitco Bassmaster Classic Champion. We'll find out who that is when we come back. The Sitco Bassmaster Classic is brought to you by Bush and in part by Lawrence and Curator. day of the Sitco Bassmaster Classic 2006, and this is a man to be reckoned with, Ron Shuffield. He's won his share of tournaments. He's a member of the Millionaires Club, finished fifth place in a tournament here in Toho just last year, and he comes in four pounds back of the leader on the final day. Definitely the guy to watch, fishing the north end of Kissimmee, going into the final day with a four-pound average. Not only that, he was fishing probably the best big bass way you could find on this lake, throwing a topwater buzzing frog, catching giants. It would not come to pass for Sheffield on this final day. He'd finish with 7 pounds, 15 ounces, 47-14, and a third-place finish in the Classic. And now we go to the man trying to lead it wire to wire and finish this Classic as the champion, the first ever to win it from the West, Luke Clawson. With 44 pounds, 5 ounces, from Spokane, Washington, Luke Clawson! Clawson learned his fishing out west. Spent a lot of time fishing bass tournaments on places like the Columbia River, where the wind always blows hard. Could those skills picked up out there help him on this final day when the weather's given everyone fit? Guys, I pulled up next to George Cocker just a second ago, and I said, man, now what do you do? And he, he acted like he was a, a football punter. He said he's just trying to find some way to get some cover. I don't know where the heck he's going to go. He tried going to the back side of this island here. I kind of regrouped, put some stuff in some plastic bags, but he's moving, moving on. I'm going to try and chase him because he said he is dedicated to Toho. I said, what are you going to do about the wind? It seems like it's changing. He said, what wind? Weather that was tough on the anglers, also tough on those whose job it was to keep up with them. The biggest thing is Luke Clawson did his homework for this tournament. He spent the entire tournament on the east side at Kissimmee. You want to know why? His two best friends, JT Kenny, Bobby Lane, two of the most dominant fishermen ever on this lake. Luke spent about three weeks fishing with them. Time well spent, and we'll make a note of this. Nothing wrong with that. It was before the off limits, perfectly legal. A place that ought to look mighty familiar to Luke Clawson. It's where he spent each and every day of this classic. Let's go down a little bit closer and take a look at this spot. All that vegetation out there, for the most part, it's those lily pads. And actually, Tommy, it's not a spot. It's an area. He was actually covering water in this bay. And something that's strange about this, we never hardly see a, a classic one in one area. A lot of times, you've got to make that final adjustment. He may do it in this bay alone. Well, I think probably. All these fish are moving out. For some reason, that patch is better than the other patches. I can't really tell by looking at it, but yesterday I had a couple bites out of there. I think every time I went to it, I had a bite. It didn't execute real well on a couple, and I caught one out of there. And now I've caught three out of it today. I, I don't know if it'll continue to replenish itself or if that's a, a deal that the muddier it gets, they're not going to bite here either. And this is the only thing keeping me here. Otherwise, I'd go run some other stuff, but right now, I've, I've been able to catch a few here. This is probably the biggest decision Luke Clawson has ever had to make in his fishing career, staying in the same area that he caught him on day one and day two. That's huge. 
I don't know what the deal is that one patch of pads. It's the only place I get a bite. I've caught three off of it this morning. Just throw the anchor here. Man, this is mud too. I don't know how we're gonna find something clear. This is ridiculous. I mean, it's just completely mud. This is real bad. We're gonna see if it gets any better, but if not, we're gonna have to get out of here. This is, it's gonna be hard to find something that's not muddy right now. Where we could go. There's a place we could go in Tiger Lake, but it's like 20 minutes away back that way, 20 minutes each way to go fish it. And it's already 12.30, that put us there at, say, 12.50. Probably too late to make that decision now. By the time we'd have to run to the lock and stuff, I'd really be pushing to make it back on time. Look how calm he is out there. Now, one thing a lot of people don't know, Luke Clawson has already won a tournament for $500,000. Let's just, let's Thank do it for Kevin. instance. He wins this That's tournament. He's in his 20s. He's a millionaire. And not only that, here's the key one, Tommy Sanders. He's single. Mm. I, I could work with this man. You know what I mean? A lot of guys would trade places with Mr. Clawson right now, but right now, he's trying to become the first ever from the West Coast to win the big one, the Sitco Bassmaster Classic. And did you know this? He's a homeless guy as well. He told me he sold his house six he, months ago. Oh, he's just been wandering around. He's a vagabond of bass fishing. That takes a little pressure off. Not that, I'm, not that I caught any monster sack or anything, but having five makes me feel a whole lot better. The official last cast right here. Come on, 12 pounder. God, that never works out. All right, let's go. Uh -oh. He just opened two live wells, ladies and gentlemen. Luke Clausen at 27 years of age, poised to earn a half a million dollars. is not dry, 44 pounds and five ounces on the scale so far this week. He has shifted down to fifth place. He has a limit of five bass. He has one good fish in there. Ladies and gentlemen, he needs six pounds and 12 ounces. 11 pounds, 13 ounces. Luke Rosen takes the title. Sitco Bassmaster Classic Champion. Wow. Hook him up, hook him up. Luke Clausen taking the title here on Lake Toho. And ladies and gentlemen, Luke, today is going to be bittersweet. Can he get a pure leader big bass? It's 5'5 five, five right now. 5'13. Pure leader big bass of the day. There's another $1,000 bonus. And a very happy pure leader big bass fan, Luke you to look at the number on the far left side. Davy Height's record was 55 pounds and 10 ounces. Today's total weight, 56 pounds, two ounces. Luke Clausen has written a new page in the record books. What is going through your mind, young man? Oh man, it's just been an incredible week. The first day started off way better than I expected, and it keeps going a little bit downhill, and I'm frustrated that I'm not catching him, but obviously I'm still doing well enough. Kevin Van Dam, from one champion to another, hand off that classic trophy. And we say thank you to Kevin Van Dam, who has been a phenomenal champion. And ladies and gentlemen, it is go time. Let's go ahead and light it up. Congratulations and all respect to that man right there, Luke Clausen. What an effort, what a champion. He's proven he really knows how to win the big ones. Luke Clawson, we apologize to him and to our viewing audience because we didn't show all the fish he caught. What we hope never Whoa. happens happened in this tournament. We had a cameraman to fall into the water. The camera was toast. You saw how far from the launch he was. Took a long time to get that camera back down there. But hey, what a classy guy, Luke Clawson. Tommy Sanders, a great cameraman we had fall yeah, in. Oh, and sure, we the now best. have a great Bassmaster Classic champion.
all seriousness, this sport needs guys like that right now. Great stuff. That is great news. A record-breaking classic as well. Let's take a look at those records that fell here at Toho Kissimmee. 11 pounds, 10 ounces for the biggest bass of the tournament. That was Preston Clark. 29 pounds, 6 ounces. That was Luke Kloss in the largest single-day five-fish limit ever caught in a classic. Three days in a classic. The former record by Davey Hyde, 55 pounds, 10 ounces, 56-2 for Luke Clawson. How about the weekend series champion, Jeff Coble, 13th place with 36-15. Not only that, highest placing Federation member, Jimmy Johnson, 9th place with 41-14. That's huge. All right, the Pure Later Big Bass Award, of course, it's Preston Clark again, 11 pounds, 10 ounces. Wow. That big bass of the tournament. Preston Clark is going to the Bush Shootout as well, 29 pounds, 1 ounce on day number one for Preston Clark. And one more piece of business to take care of our fantasy bass results oh, from no, this no, week. No, Let's no. read them out right here. Mark Zona, 365. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Jerry McKinnis, 418. Hey, Tommy Sanders, 425. I forgot to tell you, it's the biggest score that wins, Zona. I don't need the sarcasm, Tommy Sanders. How's that sound? <laughs> right, Did you get the email? The border, Lake Amistad next week. Let's take a look at the pick. Sanders keeps Van Dam in the lineup, adds Todd Faircloth. Zona, yes. well, he's keeping Tim Horton in there. At Elton Jones, that's a good Feel pick. It. Jerry McKinnis, not here to defend himself. Greg Hackney, Takahiro Mori, and all the rest right there. Log on to Bassmaster.com to get in your own fantasy fishing action. Congratulations one more time. Luke Lawson, he's the man. Great champion. Yeah! Let's go to dancing now. Yes, yes, yes. That's the right kind. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to Bassmaster.com.